And so, we return to explore the, I must say, very unique looking interior of Dragon Spiral Tower. Nice graphic design here, and you can't reach that ledge by the way, so don't try. Interesting looking water too. And if we head over here... That may be the first time we actually get to hear a protagonist in a Pokemon game speaking. I mean, that was implied to be just their thought, but even then, this is the first time we've actually seen- Oh, apart from Copycat back in Gen 2, the first time we've actually seen a protagonist's speech, basically. So, Cherry is telling us we can walk on the broken columns, which means this one right in front of us, uh, there, even though it might not look particularly climbable. And, however, if we have a Pokémon with strength, we can simply skip all of these columns and take a shortcut. So, like I've said before, HMs are never necessary to progress the game, but they're useful for just shortcuts, getting around, optional stuff, really. I kind of like the way they've done that. Strength is far from the most annoying HM move to have to have on your team, so at least it's good here. And you do actually not want to take the shortcut for the time being though, because you'll find some free items lying around. There are also wild Pokemon in here, uh, but not actually on many of the other areas of the tower. See look, I found a wild Pokemon on the pillar, and this is pretty much the main thing that shows up in the tower, Golas, uh, which has a fairly interesting thing to it, which you'll probably be seeing uh, when I catch one. That one I'm not going to catch, it's not as high level as I can possibly get it. And... Okay, is Troll Derp the best thing to have at the front of my party for catching Pokemon here? Yeah, I'm gonna pay back Team Plasma for all that annoyance before. I'm gonna troll them back this time. Yeah, I think I'll put something faster at the top just so I can run away from Then again, Golet is not the fastest thing ever. In fact, I use a Golurk on one of my Trick Room teams, so yeah, it's actually very, very slow. So anyway, we get a Stardust here, and I kinda wanna stay on this area because, um... Oh wait, there's a... Uh, because I get the feeling that wild Pokemon don't actually show up in the, uh, on the higher floors. For good reason, because you'll have a lot of trainer battles there and you wouldn't want these battles interrupting them. But still, yep, yeah, wild Pokemon here. Let's see if a decently leveled Gol Golich could show up, shall we? And after accidentally trying to press one of the items here, uh, okay, so apparently you can't ride your bike in here. That's interesting. Come on, wild Pokemon. And... Level 32, good. Now, I actually did run into a level 32 Golet before, but I, idiot that I am, accidentally pressed run. Yeah, maybe having such a fast Pokemon in the lead wasn't such a good idea after all. Oh, by the way, it may not be obvious by looking at them, so I'll just mention that Golet is in fact ground and ghost type. Very, very interesting typing there, and that means that uh, Brohoof's going to have to watch out for those magnitudes. Also, yes, uh, both Brohoof's electric type moves and Stop aren't going to work on this thing, so Flame Charge is the only thing I have. Good thing it's my weakest move for lowering down their HP. Yeah, this line is interesting. It's one of the evolution families that, one, it actually wasn't designed by the normal person who designs Pokemon. I believe it was actually designed by, uh... I believe they were among the first Pokemon designed by a Westerner. Uh, I think the Vanillite line also was. And for some reason, this thing's evolved form is ridiculously popular outside of Japan which, for being a giant robot, which is kind of interesting because um, I thought Japan would love giant robots, but anyway. Okay, this Pokedex entry doesn't mention it, but um, essentially, Golurk is kind of interesting. People thought that Porygon was the first man-made Pokemon. Actually, no, turns out Golurk predated it by several thousand, or perhaps, yeah, many, many thousand years. So, yeah, Golurk is the real first artificial Pokemon. And I'll just call this one Auto, kind of a reference to, it just sounds like a, yeah, because it was known as the Automaton Pokemon, and also kind of a Mega Man reference as well. But anyway, putting Troll Derp up in the party, because we're about to face some Team Plasma members, and yeah, I think they deserve to get trolled, don't you? And I'll use a Repel just in case there are any more Wild Pokemon encounters in this place. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Wild Pokemon only show up on the lower floors, but don't quote me on that. 
And this looks interesting. These are uh, jumpy ledges and winding paths, some of them optional, that lead to items. This is really evoking a feel of the, um... Uh, Bell Tower slash Tin Tower from Gold and Silver. It's actually kind of similar, and I get the feeling that this was an intentional throwback. After all, it's a tower that's mentioned in Legends of a City, and it's the home of a legendary Pokémon. It makes a lot of sense. That floor was pretty easy, so we'll climb up this spiral staircase and head on out into the surprisingly light opening there. Now, at this point, things start getting kind of interesting. We have uh, Bryson and Cheren holding off some plasma grunts, so finally, some grunts we don't actually need to battle. But I'd like to just talk to these guys for a bit, just to, um, oh wait, Cheren here. Yeah. Oh boy, you're telling me. You know, these two really could have held off more of these grunts, because, trust me, we're going to be fighting a lot in this part. A lot. Pro tip, uh, you may want to get a fighting type, uh, Bryson tends to go down pretty quickly against those. But I really shouldn't be telling them that. Of course, they refuse to use any, any fighting type except Scraggy. And yeah, everyone, um... <laughs> okay, Sharon is still philosophizing. And they're kind of having a, <laughs> uh, an angst off, basically, <laughs> and... <laughs> oh yeah, I love the random grunt dialogue sometimes. At least they didn't lose to Skylar, that would be just humiliating. But these guys, as you can tell by the fact they're blocking the path, yep, it's more battles time. You know, you're really one to talk, man. <laughs> Moving around, being annoying, isn't that what villainous team grunts tend to do? And I am actually leaving the uh, music on for a bit, because this is might be one of the last times we can hear the Team Plasma Encounter theme, and it is actually pretty awesome, so, um... Yeah, it's kind of sad that you never really get to hear it again after, um... After, yeah, because you gen after the, the plotline's finished, because you generally don't get to rematch any members of villainous teams. In the series, there is one exception in Black and White 2, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it, which will be in a very long time, if at all. Now it's time to troll, and you're kind of trolling me first. So, hit you with some paralysis, make you slower than me, you're getting outsped by an ugly flounder, which is just hilariously embarrassing, and start discharging. You know, I really feel like seeing the troll all song here, but <laughs> I probably won't. But anyway, yes, we are trolling them. We are trolling them real good. Oh, <laughs> Yes, see, wit witness the true power of Stunfist. The ultimate power of trolling. <laughs> oh, this was really fun when I recorded it, seriously. Taking on Team Plasma with a Stunfist. I'd never done this before, but I felt like it would be funny, so I did. And that's just the first grunt. Uh, grunt number two, and I'll just need to heal up Troll Derp a bit here, because, um... Kinda wanna go into my battles fully healed. We are starting to get slightly above the HP healing range of a Moo Moo Milk, so they're not quite full heals anymore. But they're just about, and they're cheaper than the next option up. The next option up is uh, Hyper Potions, which are much more expensive and restore 200 HP which we pretty much won't get higher than before the Elite Four. I mean, I mean, before beating the Elite Four. In most games, Hyper Potions are pretty much a guaranteed full heal right up until the end of the main story. It's not until you get into really high levels that you need to use Max Potions. Though full restores are always useful for the added chance of healing status. Oh dear. This thing is a Leopard. It may or may not have Limber, which means my Thunder Wave will be useless. I guess we'll find out. Yep, it's got Limber. Huh, so you're not gonna, uh, get trolled, eh? Oh well. Yeah, given that, um, Leopard is not the best attacker ever, it's not really gonna do much with that Home Claws boost, so I can safely just discharge spam on it. Yeah, I have no added effect to Paralysis, but, uh, if I'm gonna be taking you out in two shots anyway, what does that really matter? 
And I just realized we're kind of seeing almost a Team Plasma All-Stars here, where we get, like, first Watch Hog, then we have Leopard, the, uh, main ones of the, the main Pokemon of the male and female grunts, respectively. Once again, though, Team Plasma does kind of have a point. More reason why that, um, stupid Peter parody was completely pointless, because, um... Yeah... I can't believe they didn't realise they essentially turned themselves into real-life Team Plasma by doing that. But anyway... And we have Swaggy. Yeah, like I was saying, this is probably the only thing that Team Plasma uses that is any good against, um... Christ. Now, Scraggy doesn't have Limba, so it, it's not completely immune to paralysis. However, there is a chance it may have shed skin, which means that if it does get status, it has a slight chance of healing that status every turn. So, that could be somewhat annoying. Of course, um, speaking of annoying, I just paralyzed you, now I'm faster, and I can just hit you again before you have a chance to hit me back. Trollolololololol! Oh, I love Stunfisk. Stunfisk is so hilariously fun to use. <laughs> you know, I want to use a Stunfisk in a competitive team at least once, just for kicks. <laughs> just, I'm pretty sure the only reason someone would ever use it in competitive is just for laughs value, but it would be pretty awesome. Ugh. See, Stunfisk is kind of like, yeah, that the kind of thing that's sort of hated and loved in equal measure, it's sort of loved because it's meant to be hated so much. It's kind of interesting, um, yeah. Some people, it's almost comparable to Oliver from the Fire Emblem series, in that, uh, um, fans believe that paradoxically it's so ugly that it's beautiful. <laughs> anyway. That's enough of that, and... Yeah, you probably have Linda too. Assurance is not going to do much. Yeah, Assurance doubles in power if the target has already taken damage that turn, which usually happens through entry hazards, and since everyone spans those in competitive battles, then uh, I guess it's actually a pretty useful move. Uh, but things like... Uh, I'm not sure if Bird or Poison do it, or if the opponent attacks first and then deals recoil damage to themselves. But... Ah, oh, fake out. Okay... Ugh, oh, no static. Um, does my stun fist here even have static? It is always hilarious when someone fake outs you and then actually statics themselves. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's always hilarious when that happens. And... Do you have Limba, or do you not have Limba? I can't tell at this point. Oh great, you're using two bits. Unfortunately, I'm the one tormenting you here. <laughs> oh yes, this is hilarious. You sound like a generic Fire Emblem boss. Uh, okay, you're strange. <laughs> uh, right then. Yeah, I kind of wanted to give at least someone else a try here. I know Stunfisk is infinitely more amusing, but I kind of wanted to give All Eyes a shot here, because I don't think I've never actually uh, used a Cryogonal before. And this guy's apparently stressed out and hyper, which is not a good combination when you're um, a generic derp grunt. And, oh, three Pokemon, that's a bit more than usual. In fact, yeah, no gym leader has more than that in this generation, which is interesting. I kind of wonder if there'll be gym leaders with more than three Pokemon in, um, sixth gen. I guess it's kind of a nice number, but... And not that, um, none of the gym leaders in this generation were that hard. I mean, <laughs> Clay! <laughs> but, uh, anyway. Although at least we don't have to deal with the ridiculousness that is Winona and her, like, five Pokemon monster. Oh boy, don't use a oh good. If he'd used high jump kick, I would have been gone. You know what? I could actually be gone from this. Almost gone. Yeah. Cryogonal has some pretty bad uh, physical defense. Very I've stressed it a lot before, but I should might as well say it again. Terrible, terrible, terrible physical defense. Seriously. And let's see if Thunderbolt is um <coughs> will do enough. 
because in case you've forgotten, uh, Brohulf is in fact modest nature. In fact, Brohulf's lasted quite a while, uh, he's gone through two gyms so far. Might be time to retire him after this, but he's had a very good run. And Rockerock. I forget if Team Platinum actually used this with one before, but I guess it's... I, I want to say it has maybe a charge stone cave, I don't know. And there's Embargo, we got the TM uh, for that some time ago. It's not really all that great. It's like, you know, in competitive all you're doing is shutting off items. I mean, I wonder if it has some use in Wonder Launcher battles, which... For some reason, pretty much no one plays. I mean, the idea of being able to use items in competitive battles is just inherently really interesting, but almost no one does uh, launch a battle, so... Yeah, but I wonder if it shuts off the Wonder Launcher in those battles, because if that's the case, it might actually have some use. Oh, okay. Uh, it, I'm pretty sure there aren't any more wild Pokemon here, and hey, being Dragon Spiral Tower, we get a Dragon Fang. The subject of a, ugh, really annoying part of the original Gold and Silver. Seriously, I kinda lost a lot of sympathy for Claire once she did that. It's kind of funny, there are a whole lot of people who seem to like Claire because she, uh, refuses to give you the badge and, um, you know, <coughs> makes you do another quest, but I always saw it as evidence she was just a whiny sore loser who couldn't take a loss. I never really liked Claire that much. And anyway, here we have a part that's basically just screaming, the graphics department is showing off, yay, look what we can do with our awesome graphics now. But, anyway, it is still pretty cool. Um, again, there are just so many areas in uh, black and white that you really think it seems to have been made with the 3DS in mind. Sadly, it seems like the overworld in X and Y is not actually going to be in 3D, which, um... I'm honestly terrified that the critics are going to savage X and Y because of that, but I ho it's probably still going to be a good game regardless. Uh, that was presumably the voice of a random plasma grunt there. <laughs> Appar um, in, uh, apparently in white version, uh, because it's rest around, the scream will be uh, burn baby burn, I believe, instead of that. So, <laughs> yeah, I think the burn baby burn version is a lot funnier, but still. <laughs> Clearly some crazy team plasma grunt is refusing to control whatever's... Not refusing, it's unable to control some rampaging thing at the top of this place. That doesn't really bode well for us, does it? But... That'll be, um, we'll have to deal with that in the future. Oh, look, it's one of the sages again. I wonder if we've met this guy before or not. Anyway, this this guy's name clearly comes from the color yellow. And, unfortunately, we now have a team... We're now forced into a four-battle gauntlet. Yep, we are stuck here. Uh, until we beat these four guys. So, four battles in a row, and this means no reviving until I've, um, taken out all of them, because my no revives in battle rule. So, here we go. Number one. Two Pokemon. What you got? Watch on. I thought so. Let's see how you deal with Tom. Uh... You know, okay, actually, I'm not going to use Iron Defense just yet. Uh, I could... Um, okay, you just... Okay, Iron Defense isn't going to help, because you can just, just keep halving my HP. Speaking of halving HP, I too it KO you, and you've switched on to the Pathetic Fang, which did... Oh, critically, okay. That did surprisingly a large amount of damage, but I am only level 30 or 31, am I? 30 or 31? I think I'm just 30. See, from where I'm seeing the screen, I actually can't look at the levels that well. But, anyway... Oh, that Intimidate is not... Good. I could bring all ice in and try and ice you. Sadly, um... Oh, I forgot to teach this thing Frost Breath. I have no, uh, Ice Beam TM, but... So I'm stuck with Aurora Beam at the moment, but Frost Breath is almost as good because... as, uh, Ice Beam, because, uh, again, it's only 40 power, but guaranteed critical effectively makes it 80 base power that ignores defense modifiers. Not that they're used all that much, but I guess it's kind of helpful. And wow, looks like I don't actually need anything more powerful after all. Go all ice. And number one is down. 
You know, I was about to make some kind of cheesy Unova's Dawn will come once your kind is gone or something like that, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry, but your dream is about to be hit with uh, Dream World server limitations. Yes, it was an obligatory joke, but I felt like I had to. Uh, well, I keep thinking what the Dream World would be like if it had. Yeah, Dream World has a weird history. Uh, I've never really used it all that much, uh, but basically what happened was when the servers first went live, they severely underestimated the traffic they would be getting, and the entire thing crashed. After that, they imposed the one hour limit, and the rest is painful history. Um, thank you for just erasing your own Intimidate, and giving me a plus one, and I'm just gonna Iron Defense up, and completely negate that, um, basically totally ignore the chance of Confusion doing any damage to me, because of course, Confusion damage is considered a physical attack in all, to all intents and purposes, although it is typeless. So basically you are actually hitting yourself, which means that your own attack stat and your defense stat, including modifiers, are taken into account when it comes to confusion damage. I don't care, I've still got plus one. Okay, I won't be able to use items to heal myself, but I think uh, all cure this confusion. Though I'm getting incredibly lucky with that confusion. What the whole confusion formula means is that Pokemon, like, Special Sweepers... Uh, actually, no, Special Sweepers still tend to take decent damage because... Okay, that's gonna be super effective, that could be a problem. Tend to take decent damage because they have pathetic physical defense as well as pathetic physical attacks or sort of evens out. But the Pokemon that tend to take the least damage from confusion are Pokemon like tanks with really, really low attack stats that massive defense. Uh, yeah, things like Bronzong. Although Bronzong can have alright attacking stats. I mean, I saw a, someone use a Life Orb Bronzong against me in a tournament once. It was on a Trick Room team, but it still kind of surprised me. Oh, right, uh, yeah, my uh, confusion is gone, so you are seriously going to get it now. Oh, great. Uh, if only I had, like, Earthquake or something. I'm not sure if Bulldoze actually hits uh, things that are digging. Because, yeah, Earthquake hits Pokemon that are underground with Dig. I believe it double power at that, which is utterly ridiculous. And my embargo seems to have worn off. I'm not sure why. And, yeah, even super effective attacks are only doing that much. Go top! And I don't... Ugh, stop it! Stop being annoying! Ugh, I really wish I had Earthquake. That would have been hilarious. Reminds me of that battle CZ where you have a Marchamp and you use Swords Dance, then Earthquake a digging Aggron. That has got to hurt, seriously. That would be a lot of damage. Double super effective, effective as bonus when you dig, Swords Dance. But in fact, I didn't realise for years that Marchamp can't actually learn Swords Dance at all. So was that two or three? I'm confused. I think that was just two. So anyway, yeah, one of the XC battle CDs actually has an illegal moveset. Yay, finally we get to hear that quote again. Oh, I love these guys, seriously. Plasma! <laughs> I can't help but um, hear that quote in my head, slash yell at myself whenever I use the plasma coil in Ratchet and Clank games. <laughs> or any plasma-based weapon in any game. Really. And here we have a Trubbish, the most adorable garbage bag ever. Which is actually going to be not that effective against Baldor because, um, yeah, I may not be ground type, but poison type moves aren't really going to do that much to me. I forget if poison is. Normally, I memorize all, all the type matchups by heart, but I kind of forget if poison is not very effective on rock. Um, uh, yeah, or if it's just ground that it's not very effective on. I'm not entirely sure. Oh boy, I'm going to have to memorize all the fairy type matchups for the next generation too. Let me see if I can get it off the top of my head just to test. Okay, super effective against Dragon, Poison, uh, no, weak to Poison. Super effective against Dragon, Fighting, and Dark. Weak to Poison and Steel. Fairy type attacks are resisted by Fire. Oh yeah, Fairy itself is resisted to Bug, Dark, Fighting, and Immune to Dragon. Fairy type attacks are resisted by Fire, Steel, and Poison. I think that's everything. That should be, at least. There was a rumour that, uh, that Psychic would also be resistant to 
Berry, which I thought would make a whole lot of sense because, uh oh, I've been poisoned, that's bad. But at least I can mud bomb you. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get off onto random tangents, but uh, I always thought that Psychic would actually resist Fairy because, you know, Fairies die and don't believe in them, so the, the best defense against them is your mind, and you know how the Psychic type represents, rep you know, represents the mind, right? Kind of made sense. Yeah. Some people were worried about Fairy being resistant to Bug, thinking that Bug was already an underpowered type to begin with. Bug got a hell of a lot better in this generation, and Bug has never been that bad of an attacking type. It's always been a pretty good one, actually. Uh, also, Fire resisting Fairy. I'm not entirely sure why, but at least it makes Fire types more useful uh, defensively, because previously they were one of the worst defensive types. <laughs> oh, I love these grunts, seriously. These, these quotes. Grunts in every Pokemon game always have the best dialogue. So, anyway, uh, I have a feeling Heatran is going to be used a lot, uh, come, uh, the new games. It's going to have an excuse to actually run Flash Cannon, I'll tell you that. And the last one only has one Pokemon. What do you have? And watch hold. I kind of want these guys to start using Scrafty eventually, but, uh, I don't think they will at this point. Wonder if they ever will. They might, I don't know. And I'll just iron defense this thing, and you are content to use your stupidly stupid, not very effective move. I guess you're hoping to flinch me to death, but that's probably not gonna work. And I'll just settle for one iron defense, because that's probably enough with you just... Seriously, fighting a rock? You really don't value your teeth, do you? And finally, you're getting smart. Yeah, that is gonna cut my HP in half regardless of defense. Technically speaking, his best strategy here would be just to spam Super Fang and then finish me off when I'm on, like on 1 HP. But still, 4 round gauntlet down, and that was not that hard. Uh, because I have to continue this challenge and you're standing in my way? Anyway, sadly you don't actually get to battle the Sage here. Well, we certainly don't want that, do we? You all say the same things, don't you? You know, it's quotes like that that make me kind of sad. Again, there are some team plants of people who do really have a point. Alright, it's time to climb the ominous see-through staircase of doom. And we greet it with the ominous music of doom. And no hidden item there, I thought there would be, that's interesting. And once we step forward, we see... Whoa, crap. Yeah, I stayed silent during that, because this is probably the first time we've had a major, pretty much 3D animated cutscene. And yes, this here is Zekrom. Not the Pokémon on the cover of this version, the Pokémon on the cover of White version, surprisingly. So N's main goal here is to defeat the Pokémon League by being an uber noob. Yeah, really. <laughs> Okay, so naturally we have to go find the other dragon, but where could the other dragon be? Oh, well obviously we're going to meet Reshiram. And obviously we're going to do that, because we're the protagonist, and who else would interfere with him? Still, it's not like N is particularly villainous. And he's already made friends with Zekrom. Which could be a problem for us. Yep, Team Plasma now has an Uber on their side. The other villainous teams all tried and failed miserably, but Team Plasma's the first one to actually get it to really trust them. I guess N had a point when he said changing the world by force rarely works. So of course, there is another legendary Pokémon. Where there is black, there is white, yin and yang, there are two, you know, polar opposite legendaries. And we have to decide what to do next. Well, there's not much to analyze about what just happened. Uh, 
N just made friends with a legendary dragon, and that could be very, very bad. I don't think astounding is the uh, word here. I think the whole I think the word here is holy crap, we're all screwed. Unless we go get Reshiram. So yeah, it looks like the plot is really starting to kick up. Will this be the final battle between um, us and Team Plasma? Well, a lot of earlier games in the Pokemon series, like I've been saying before, uh, between the 7th and 8th gyms is usually where the battle happens. Oh, and of course, who else would give us uh, exposition but... The champion guy, who I noticed avoided the grass. You know what would be really funny if he was like, Allow me to explain ev- And then gets interrupted by a wild Pokemon battle. That would just be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why he uh, went around the grass there. <laughs> so, it's exposition time. Well, the thing is, normally I would agree with you, but N doesn't really seem like the kind who'd want to destroy the world. As much as I hate to say it, I actually almost think that Zekrom's in good hands. N's more misguided than actively malicious. I mean, if we could somehow convince him that, um, you know, there are, there are people who aren't horrible to Pokemon, then maybe we won't have a world-destroying crisis on our hands. Of course, that's probably not going to happen, but still. This is a problem because, again, as Alder's saying, now that N has has the power, essentially, the world might just everyone might just be forced to release their Pokémon out of fear. So, yeah, almost like a Pokémon equivalent of peace through nuclear disarmament. Well, not so much nuclear disarmament, but the threat of having nuclear weapons and forcing everyone else to not attack you unless they get. Anyway, um, that analogy went nowhere, but yeah, uh, Zekrom is an electric type, uh, as you've noted there, which is going to become important much, much, much later, but for the time being, we just have to know that it's an electric type. And N apparently is going to let us awaken the other dragon and uh, pit the two of them together. Uh, yes it is, but fortunately they're all banned in competitive battling, so we don't need to worry about that. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure, but again, we'll find out about that much, 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 much later. So, searching for another Uber to counter his might help. Of course, I don't actually plan to use it, but it's the thought that counts, right? At least it'll keep another one from falling into Team Plasma's clutches. Ah, uh, yeah, I just said that, Alder. <laughs> So, where could it have been? Where was an area that we couldn't uh, access before? Hmm, the Relic Castle. Perhaps that convenient NPC who said the place was closed for cleaning would be gone now. Yeah, you didn't think they'd um, never let us explore the lower floors of that place, did you? So, next time, we will be going to investigate uh, the ancient ruins of the Relic Castle. For real this time. And we might just find ourselves some new Pokemon on the way. So, Bryson and Cedric are going back to the tower to do some investigation work. Cheren is going to... are you going to angst again? Oh well, I guess Cheren, you may have finally found your purpose. Uh, yeah, good thing you're not exactly angsting anymore. And Alda's going with the, um, I mean, Sharon's going with Alda. <laughs> Biggest understatement in the entire game. Thanks for that. So, Bianca is confused. I guess I have to go to the Relic Castle. Uh, I, yeah, I already know that. I've been there a long time ago. That was the place where the troll Game Freak people put the Earthquakes here, which we can't actually get now. 
So, yeah, we've got to go past the desert resort all the way um, to the Relic Castle, which, again, we've already been to before. And since the desert resort is actually completely optional, it's entirely possible that you've never actually been there before in, in a playthrough. However, in order to get back there, we're going to need a Pokémon with Fly. So, uh, I'm going to have to kick someone out of the team while I put um, me back in. So, yeah, someone's going to have to go. Because unfortunately, the one I'm using as my flyer is not going to be too helpful in the next few battles. That's one of the downsides of uh, this compared to a regular playthrough, is usually you have uh, a flyer that's actually trained and a competent battler. In my first playthrough of Black Version, I used Archeops, and boy was he amazing. Uh, actually, I think it was a she. Uh, but anyway, uh, they were awesome. Uh, in Black 2, I believe I used uh, a Sigil Leaf, actually. Uh, a certain special Sigilive, but, um, to say any more would be spoilers. But yeah, there's a lot of good flying types in Unova, um, Unfezzard just isn't one of them. Pretty much every flying type in the deck that is not Unfezzard is at least decent. Or, in Swanner's case, is actually helpful as an HM slave because they can learn Surf too. So, Tomph may have to go back in to the PC, and yeah, the situation hasn't reached the point where we need where we need Polar yet. We'll use them a little bit later. But we're fully healed, we've got enough healing items. Yeah, I'm pretty sure 40 40 something Moo Milk should ought, should ought to do us. We are about ready to get going, and uh oh Rocky Helmet, you still have that? Uh okay. You know what? I could troll people even more with this stun fisk. I can put the Rocky Helmet on you. Uh, you know that, um, me is the only thing on my party that can actually use the Eevee Light at this point, but unfortunately, uh, not like I'm actually going to use them in battle, so, yeah. So, here's my team. We are ready to head over to the Relic Castle and find something to counter Team Plasma with. Not that Troll Derp hasn't been enough already. So, let's get going. Next time.